is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, it's Bran. I'm loving Hallmark movies. Hey, it's Panda, and I'm liking Hallmark movies. It's like we've never done this before. You guys are the worst. Uh, I'm Dan. I despise Hallmark movies. And my name is Travis, and uh, I'm I'm in I'm in a Hallmark movie. And, and this, this is the Deck the Hallmark, Hallmark podcast. podcast. Winkleheads, wow, wow. calm down. The Winkleheads are here. Relax, in everybody. Stop yeah. emailing us, calling us. Yeah. When are you going to get them? When are you going to get them? That's yeah. exactly right. It's the, and the phone lines have just been jammed oh. with Winkleheads. Well, like, and it, this is our fault because we have 1 800 Winkle. That's right. Yeah. We have that phone number, which yeah. is not enough you know, numbers, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's very rare that after one movie an actor comes on the show, that's very rare, but two, that they already have a fan base. Yeah. After one movie, but Hutz. we're not talking about just anybody here. We're no. talking about the one and the only Travis Van Winkle. Travis, sir, how you doing? You know, you guys bring up a really sensitive subject to me where I have a lot of trauma. Um, <laughs> a lot of times people will mispronounce my last name and they'll forget the van and they just say, well, hello, Mr. Winkle or <laughs> Travis Winkle. And I, there's always a moment where I, I have to stop and go. It's it's the uh, you forgot the van. It's a van van Winkle, uh, but you guys have created a thing from it, and I love it. So now it's it's the Winkleheads. So you guys are helping me heal some trauma. We're doing the so. best we can. And now, did you see we we were on Good Morning America? I talked about your movie on national television. I don't know if you saw this. Said you got to watch this not. movie. Yeah, yeah. I on national television. I said, guy, this was the weekend before uh, the movie project with Christmas. Wish, wish, yes. Yep. The movie was coming in. out. You did your research. I, I, I slowly <laughs> remembered the name. Project. There's a project yeah. in it. It's Christmas, Christmas related, and there's a wish. Project Christmas. Uh, talked about it on national TV, and I said Winkle. I said the Winkle heads are coming out just off the top of my head, and the people laughed, and then the, got on the on the twitters, and now we're talking about it all the time. The, the, the Winkle, Winkle heads, heads are just a thing. Yeah. So uh, Winkle heads unite. We're here. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm into it. I support it. Please send me a t-shirt with Winkleheads on it. I love it. And mm-hmm. Travis, speaking of the Winkleheads, the Winkleheads are going to be out in full force tomorrow for the Deckies. That's right. I don't know if you've heard about our award show, the Deckies. Uh, first annual uh, is tomorrow, and you are nominated for the Smolder to Burn Best Male Performance of the Year. Wow. Uh, very exciting. You're up against Whoa. some heavy hitters, Trav. Yeah. You're up against some heavy hitters. I would like to thank, um, <laughs> let's see, my my mom for always just being a great mother to me and for my dad for you know he really provided a um a stellar income for our family and it's uh it brought me to where i am today and i just want to say thank you to my parents i so appreciate that because there. i have to you know we're, we're Never going through yeah. we're getting everybody for mm-hmm. their acceptance speeches and so you just saved me time i don't have to yeah, no, i don't have great, to holler right? at you at all so. you, you know travis you've been at least by imdb you've been doing this for 17 years did you ever think you'd get to the point where Decky nomination was coming your way. <laughs> this was always a dream of mine. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been manifesting this one for quite a few years. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm not surprised that it's here. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I, it is crazy that it's been um, 17 plus years. You know, you don't, when you when I moved out here, I didn't know what was going to happen. I just knew that I wanted to become an actor and, and play the game. And, and it's just unraveled and yeah. uh, you know continued and it's it's so much fun to be here so i'm just happy to be on your guys' show and that we're talking about the work i love it well let's take Thank us you. back 18 plus years to when before you were an actor uh kind of how did you get interested in it did it was it what you wanted to be as a kid uh what kind of made you finally take the leap into acting uh 17 years ago so I definitely didn't see it happening as a kid i i wanted to be in the nfl for a long time where are you from and so I'm from Georgia. You have, oh. oh, okay, right. We're in South Carolina. We're we're in okay. uh, Greenville, so about two hours from Atlanta. Um, where uh, were you a Falcons fan? Oh yeah, love when Michael Vick came through. That was amazing. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was always a Redskins fan. Um, before I talk any further, how do I t- change it to where I'm not just looking? Because I'm looking so, at myself on two screens. So yeah, it's just yeah. like my face twice. It's just whenever it's, you whenever you go, we're changing the screens here live for video. And yeah, so whenever you're it goes be on to television, you, yeah. Travis, I, 
Oh, I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> I, like, I, 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 I don't want to be. I don't want my face in front of the camera. I'm kidding. Um, how, so how do I just not see myself? You just so much? just could just you cover just, your eyes because yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. You're, or there just you are. look above it and talk. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just. Like, <laughs> you look great. You look great. Um, uh-huh. um, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I always wanted to be in, in the uh, in the NFL, and I never really thought about. Uh, being an actor, but I, I used to have my mom's friend, Tammy Darby. She would always tell me that I needed to Tammy. model. I needed yeah. to act. I needed to just be in front of the camera. That's classic Tammy, though. <laughs> Tammy always, you know, there's always a Tammy around. <laughs> always um, a Tammy. And so that kind of got the idea percolating, I think. And then my friend in, in high school, he was an Abercrombie and Fitch model. And all the girls, he was like on the bags and the posters, and the girls were very much into him. And I asked, like, how did you do that? I want to do that. And uh, he introduced me to his agency, and I had to submit a photo. And I submitted a photo of a potbelly pig that I had. Our family had a potbelly pig at the time <laughs> and a football. And I sent a photo in of me doing that. And, and they, they were like, you're the, you're the pig guy. Like, Come in. Let's talk. <laughs> and when I started college, I, I got into a little bit of modeling. And, like, I was in Walmart. Like, that's when I knew I really made it. I made it into, like, I had a big spread inside of Walmart. And, I remember um, that spread. That was a good spread. Yeah, oh, it's uh, it's very memorable. Very yeah. memorable. Um, but I started I, I started getting in front of the camera modeling first, and I never really thought about acting. I had to do one scene in high school for a drama class. That's the only time I've, I'd ever acted beforehand, and I had to play a drunk kid driving in a car. And we're all <laughs> hooting and hollering, and we're on stage, and we're um, in a car, and something happens, and we crash, and then we all die and fall out of the car. That's the only thing I remember about <laughs> acting. Uh, so hopefully that's not symbolic of what my career is. <laughs> um, was that for like a PSA or like a very special episode? Like why were you, know, you doing that scene? I guess our teacher was just trying to, to, to give us some lessons that's right. through art. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it uh, yeah, that, I remember having a good time and being frightened out of my, I was so scared to do that scene in front of everybody, but it was exhilarating. So I don't know. I never really thought about it. Never really thought about being an actor until... I came out to Los Angeles for the summer and then it just set in. I, I jumped into an acting class and I was like, I'm feeling all these things and I want to keep feeling these things. And I was just off to the races. I, it could be me. Um, I, I'm from South Carolina. I've been a Southerner my whole life. I don't detect a, a big accent for, with, with you at all, like a big Southern accent. Is that something you worked out of? And, and, and just got rid of over the years living in Los Angeles? Or is that something that you just never had growing up like a lot of people? There are Georgia? two gateway words okay. into the Southern dialect. That's right. Y'all and yep. fixing. Yep. Fixing to get cut, ready every time. So cut, cut those out. Yeah. And the, the, your Southern accent will disappear. It'll <laughs> dissolve into the background. And I think I had a casting director pretty early on tell me that I was that I, I had a Southern accent. And I was surprised. I was like, no, I, no, I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> And at that moment on, I started to work going forward on um, uh, relieving myself of uh, this accent. <laughs> so when, when you, you come home uh, <laughs> to the South, do you get the accent back? Does it, do you just fall right back into it? Mm-mm. Really? Wow. Good for, wow. You. Good for you. What do you mean good mm-hmm. for you? Uh, how dare you? That's I'm offensive. so sorry. You're a traitor to the South, Travis. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm from Florida. And so I, you know, I'm a traitor to the South. That's right. Um, so it, you move out there. How long was it before you uh, decided to take that acting class? Why did you decide? Was it like everyone else is doing it? So might as well give it a shot. Uh, how did that happen? And what, how many times going to that class did it take for you to be like, I kind of want to keep, keep doing this, keep going forward. So it was my second day in LA. And I, I came out here, I'd, I'd come out a, uh, a couple months prior and I got a print agent and a modeling agent and I, I got a job at Red Lobster. So I had everything all set up for me for when I came nice. out to Los Angeles. Um, for, yeah, Red Lobster was great. It was good to me. Um, so right when I got into the acting class, I immediately knew, I, I, okay, let me backtrack. I came out for the summer. I was, I just finished up my junior year of college and I came out for the summer just to see what LA was like. And within two days, I started the acting class and I knew I was not going back to the university that I was at. I was wow. not going to go back and study business management. I was not going to go back to Georgia. This is my new destination. Wow. This is my new dream. It happened like that. And from there, I, I, I just, I, 
threw myself into it. I jumped into every class that I could. I surrounded myself with all sorts of actor friends and was, was studying acting like crazy. And it became an obsession an obsession, like hardcore obsession, sometimes an unhealthy obsession mm. for, for now almost two decades. How, mm. uh, what's the first thing you booked? First thing you remember booking? The first big thing was that's so Raven. Yeah. 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 Which was a really fun sh- I, 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 uh, I got to be, uh, I, I had visions. I could see the future, but only when I kissed Raven. <laughs> and so it was, it was this thing. And I got to kiss the other girl in it. And so I was in my 20, early 20s and I'm thinking, wow, I get to hang out with pretty girls and I get to, you know, I, I get to get paid to make friends and to kiss girls. This is amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was, a, that was a big one. Big one for me. Big win. I think what, I remember that episode. What is the thing that you I were, hope you really is Double Vision was the the title. Double yeah, I think I'm not. That wasn't yeah. a joke. I watched every episode of that. That I, is used to be a big. Dis- <laughs> that, that is so Panda. Raven. That's so that's Raven. So Panda. <laughs> um, yeah, I. I. What is the thing? Because that was in 04. You had a few other things from 04 here. What's the thing that you booked that you went? Okay, I'm never going to Red Lobster again. I'm going to do this. This is what I'm. I'm doing. <laughs> Good question. So I. I transferred from Red Lobster to uh, the Chart House, which was a, a classier restaurant. Yeah, uh, and yeah. no Cheddar Bay the biscuits water. there. <laughs> no, no Cheddar Bay biscuits. <laughs> uh, but we had a beautiful view of the ocean, and it was a, a, a good little job that I had. And I booked a movie called Accepted. Yeah, it's a which good, is fun a one. Really cool college comedy. Yeah, it's, it's a funny. Movie. Jonah Hill and Justin Long and Blake Lively, and really, really good cast. Um, I booked that movie and I believe that was 2005 and there was a particular ritual that happens at this restaurant because there's a lot of other artists and actors and musicians and people that were really chasing their dreams working as as on the waitstaff. Whenever you would um, transition from there and really be able to commit to your craft and work on your craft full time and make a living with your with your art, you they would basically take you, you would quit the restaurant, they would take you out to the ocean and they would throw you in. And oh, that's like fantastic. This, this like ritual thing. So they, they took, they dragged me down to the ocean against my will. So you're supposed to fight the whole time. So they're like dragging me and I'm fighting and they threw me in the ocean. And I remember I just took my shoes and this is not the best choice to do for the environment, but I took my shoes and it was very symbolic. And I threw them into the ocean and I said, I will never, um, work at a restaurant again. I will only make my living as an mm. actor. Wow. And I mean, if I would have stayed in that position for like the next four minutes, I'm sure the shoes would have just come right back to me and then I could have <laughs> thrown them in the trash can. But I don't remember doing that. I just remember launching the shoes out and being like, I'm an actor. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. That's Is so there, cool. I asked this to every guest and most of them humor me. Um, a particularly memorable, bad audition. Like you left and you went, wow, that was awful. They're not calling. Anything, anything oh. remember, like particularly bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> that's just kind of part of the deal too, because yeah. you're, you're learning how to, it's like when you first start driving a car, you're not the best driver. You know, you yeah. have to really, you, you have to know how to use all your mirrors. You have to understand that other people are also driving in their own little worlds. You, you, you have a lot that you have to process all at once. And it takes a long time to really find your groove and to feel really good at it. And I think in the process of, of understanding how to use my instrument and understanding what auditions were and understanding that rejection is a huge part of the game. Um, I definitely fell on my face a lot. I have one audition where I went in and I was supposed to play a cop and I didn't know that you weren't supposed to like run around the room (laughs) and like, like really pretend what was happening. <laughs> so like I had this whole like fake gun thing and I remember I like jumped behind the couch and I like got up and I like ran across and did the chair. And she's trying to like videotape me this whole time. And this is for a series regular role, which I clearly wasn't ready for. And a lot of times in auditions, you just, you just want to be subtle. You want to get in there and do your work and get the heck out. And you, you can, if you have to have a big moment where you, you pull a gun on somebody, you can do it with just a look. And it doesn't have to be this whole like thing where you're running around. So I think I left that audition thinking I did great. <laughs> I crushed it. And the feedback that I got was that, that it's never going to happen. And that like, I need to like calm down a little bit, not try so hard. And I mean, I've had people tell me terrible things after auditions before, and it's just part of the deal. It's part of the learning curve. I love it. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be back here. on deck the homework.
Oh, we're back. It's wild. I have to. I don't usually ask about working with other actors, but my my producer Tracy would kill me. You've done an episode of Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> She's the biggest Frankie Muniz fan. How's Frankie? Uh, Frankie's great. Yeah. I and mean, this was in this was a long time ago. But I, I actually played basketball with him a couple times afterwards, and he's he's really down to earth, really laid back, and uh, just a good dude. So I I only have good good experiences with him. Is there anybody we'd ask you about that you would say negative things about? <laughs> I would say no comment. Okay. Um, like, how's working for Michael Bay? <laughs> you know, you can say what you want about Michael Bay. Dude's a genius. He's he's he knows what he's doing. I know I he knows going he, with that question. He, no. But he's he he actually this guy knows his stuff. He he's a smart dude. He knows he, he yeah. knows exactly what he's making. I was just seeing what I get there. Uh, I figured I'd <laughs> give it a shot. Uh, you now you're. All everybody we talk to, their IMDb kind of filmography is eclectic. Yours even seemingly more so than others. I mean, you've been in a ton of sitcoms people have heard of, and t- you know, TV dramas and big time movies, uh, horror movies, action movies. Is there a particular fit for you that you just think is your favorite, you know, genre to work in? Uh, I think I'm still discovering it. Mm. I, I think I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm, I like really playing in everything. Um, so I don't know. I feel like, I feel like what it's been over the last six years of my life, it's been a lot of action stuff, like a lot of heavy drama. And so I was really drawn to want to do some comedy. And then I got a little taste of that with instinct, a show that I did with uh, Alan Cumming and got to play around a bit. And, and so now I, it, it changes. It really, it really changes. Um, I'm doing a show right now called You on Netflix. Yeah, mm-hmm. and gonna it's, it's definitely it's intense. we've and it's, we've yeah. seen every episode of You, mm-hmm. uh, and it's I, on your IMDb. It says you're in all ten episodes. I know that that might be living or dead or trying to fool us, but what <laughs> what what can you give us there, Trav, about what what you're doing in in You? Because we're we're ready for season oh, three. Ready. This uh, this show is so twisted. I love it so much. <laughs> the writing is so good, and and I really. I love the actors that I'm working with. I get to play a character that's larger than life. And I'll just, I can say what, what's already out there publicly is I'm a biohacker and a fitness expert. And my wife and I, we welcome Joe and, and love into our world. And I, um, I get to play a guy that I, I I'm all about. Um, I'm a, I'm a leader of men in this show and I oh, love to, boy. to get, to take men on trips out into the woods and to, um, to get in touch with our masculinity. And wow. that, that's, that's, that there, that's kind of an essence, essence of who I am. And so a lot of fun happens in this, this season. I'm so excited to I uh, cannot be have everybody see it. I'm excited you, to keep filming it because we're in process right now. You could just see him smiling. Like he's not telling us the main thing. I that, can't that and it's be exciting. more ready yeah. for that. I love, I told you yeah, about you. you is a show that I think, at its best reminds me of like when it, when you're early seasons of Dexter. Did you watch Dexter on Showtime? I haven't seen much of Dexter, um, no. But it, it reminds me, it's a very pulpy, like it's designed to watch a bunch at once and, and anything can kind of happen. And Love. when Dexter was kind of operating, Dexter is a phenomenal, the first four seasons of Dexter are wonderful. Uh, and But it, it, it has this addictive quality to it that you just want to keep watching it over and over again. So pumped. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pumped for this. And I, what I love about this show, too, is it's just even though it's dark and it's twisted, it's you're inside Joe's head. And, and the, the, just the narration, everyone is his fodder. And it's just so funny. Yeah. I feel like I find myself laughing out loud a lot when watching the first two seasons. So I'm excited just to be a part of the part of the ride. Fantastic. So good. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, Hallmark, kind of how you got hooked up with him. You've done some stuff in the past, some acquired stuff, some of the similar type of movies. Uh, how did you ultimately get hooked up with, with Hallmark? The Hallmark is fun because I you don't audition for Hallmark films. Uh, they usually just find you and you get a you get a call one day from your manager or your agent. They're like, hey, you, they want you to do, to do this film. Do you like the script? Um, and so that's always been nice with with Hallmark partic- uh, specifically is it's always this incoming um, incoming call that uh, it's I, I usually the, the ones the times that they've reached out to me one I did in 2017 with Bridget Regan 
it was called crit, crit, shoot. I don't even know what the heck it was called. I'm sure it was about Christmas though. Sure. Um, um, but the one that I did with her in 2017, I just worked with her on the last ship for five seasons mm. or four seasons. So I got to work with her again and the story was really cute. Um, so I don't, I don't know how the machine of Hallmark works, but somehow they just find you, they reach out to you and you just, you, you know, do you accept, uh, press yes and, and enter the, the Hallmark world. And that's what's happened. Wow. Is Christmas it, getaway. Christmas getaway. Christmas getaway. I knew Christmas for. was in it. Yeah, it's a good guess on your part, Trav. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I've got, I do have some homework questions, but just before we get there, is there a particular, everybody says that every cast and crew is the best and they're, they're like family and this is what really makes the show work. You hear that about every show. You've been on just umpteen number of shows. Which uh, TV show actually, or movie, stood, stands out as actually the one that you were like, that you guessed it on, not a series regular, not last ship, but that you guessed it on one or two episodes, you're like, man, that cast and crew really does feel like a family, like more than the rest of them. Yeah, I did a... Um... Well, I was, I guess I was, I was on instinct for every episode, but I would say instinct was that show. I came on to their show as it was their second season and Michael Roush and, um, 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 um why did I just forget his name? Um, it's cause I'm literally staring at myself, two <laughs> screens. It's two, there's two screens of myself. Alan Cumming, the lead. Alan Cumming, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so Michael Roush and Alan Cumming made an agreement. And I believe before they started the show was that there need three things need to happen. First of all, everyone needs to be really passionate about their jobs and really like love to be there. Secondly, dogs need to be around set all the time. Nice. And thirdly is there's always dancing in between setups. And so our main cap camera operator was also a DJ. What? And so for me, this was a set coming into the second season. You never know what you're walking onto. And I walked onto a set where I'm like, this is how it, this is how it should be run. This is an amazing environment. So, so creatively fulfilling and everyone's happy and dancing and there's, there's dogs everywhere. So to me that so far that's been, that stands out. Man, that's, that's so cool. Sounds like a great place to work. <laughs> I'm in for that. Well, that's kind of what we, we do that too. Yeah. Lots of dance. I mean, we are big dancers. Oh, like, yeah. look at us. Come on. Prove it. Well, <laughs> I don't want to don't, 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 don't make me dance. Um, what's, uh, what's, uh, when we, when you think of your filmography and kind of the movies that have been on screen on the big screen, uh, what's something that like when you went to see the movie was just the most like, I, I cannot believe I'm on the big screen. Like there's something magical about being on the big screen. I have to imagine. Yeah, I would say Friday the 13th yeah. was, yeah. that was a wild experience for me. Um, working with Michael Bay again and the cast was, was so much fun. And, um, we got to go to Austin for two months. And the, when we had our premiere in LA, um, it was at the, the Grauman's Chinese. So it was this oh, huge yeah. Yeah. premiere. My whole family flew in. We got all dressed up and there was, it was, it was just this whole thing. And I just have such a weird 15 minute sex scene in that film. So it was really, it was really strange just being next to my girlfriend at the time. And then my mom's right there. <laughs> um, but minus that, uh, the the whole experience it, that I feel like I was really proud of that film and how it turned out and um, it, just watching it up on the big screen with everybody in the room the, the the energy was so it was just there was so much electricity and mm -hmm. the after party was out of this world and that was that was a, a, a pretty remarkable experience in my life. That's I'm so sorry. Cool. I got to go back here. So you are <laughs> you're sitting in a row with all your closest people. And it's uh, like, what, what are you doing in that moment? You like, know, do you it's just, coming. You, you know, know it's coming. Like, yeah. Do you just keep your head down? Like what? I'm just glad that my grandma didn't come to the premiere. Oh, <laughs> <gracious. laughs> is like, is, is your mom just like, I, it's like giving you a talking to afterwards? <sighs> you, come my on, mom Travis. Has seen, she's seen me do that a lot. I guess in my career, there's been, I've, I've probably died like 17 <laughs> times and um, I'm sure I've had some intimate moments on yeah. screen. So I think she's, Used to it. Yeah, she's just used to it. I, if your me, Travis died again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, if your grandma's from Georgia, she may have left thinking that you were in a different film industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've, I, I don't think she's seen the film. I don't think she's seen that one. Okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. Not a big Friday the Thirteenth fan. Um, 
Let's take a quick break. Dan, is that cool? Sure, yeah, uh, we'll take a quick break. It. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go back here on Deck the Hallmark. No time like the present. Okay. Uh, welcome uh, back. We're here with Trav. Um, I got I th- I got a question. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Project Christmas Wish. Yeah. yeah um, boy. It, it, I, I, I think for me, it was a surprise of the season. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a movie. Uh, we, we often talk about like, it seems like Hallmark puts a lot of the heavy hitter classic Hallmark stars in November, especially early on in the season. And you get towards the end of the holiday season and it's just like, well, here's the number. Here's the movies that they needed to get to the quota of 40. Like here it is. And so we go into this last weekend. It was the last movie. Last Project movie. Christmas, which was the last movie of the season. And it was really good, man. And the, the, the relationship uh, was really good. The, the, the lines, the focus between the two characters growing. And uh, just, I, I loved it. I, I want to know for you. I love that. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, what, for, for you, tell us a little bit about making it. Uh, your first thoughts when you, when you heard about the movie, the script, um, your coworkers, all that good stuff. Yeah, I love, you know, save the best for last. Uh, I, I didn't realize, I actually didn't know that they put everything, uh, all the good stuff up front. I thought we had the best slot. They would never say that, Travis. They would never say we put all the good stuff up front, but Thanksgiving week tends to be the, their home run hitting week. Got it. Well, I thought because everyone would be home, because I think we aired on the 20th or yep. the 22nd yep. or something, I logically was like, well, this is Christmas time. This is when you want to watch a Christmas movie. This is the best time for our film, like I thought we were in prime time position from the get go, not knowing the, how Hallmark really works. Um, but when I got this script, I, um, I was actually in process of just finding out. I just gotten a call moments before that I was about to book you. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and then I got this email and I'm just like, this is, this is amazing. Like, absolutely. Cause I, there's been such a, with the whole COVID thing, there had been a big break in our industry. Yeah, um, there was a big pause button. So to be back online and in such a cool way. When I, did I you book do, it? This was mid September, I okay. believe. And so this that that means I would because all of us, you know, we took a forced pause. Yeah. And so the Hallmark film was such a perfect opportunity to let me just jump back in and work again, leading me right into go film you. And so for me, it was just this one-two punch that I was really excited about. And then reading the script. Oh, it's super cute. Thought it was really fun. And then I found out that um, uh, Amanda uh, Schull was the lead actress in it. And I looked her up and I'm like, she is amazing. She, she does good things for the world. She's a really talented actress. And it was a very easy decision to say yes to this one. Um, um, and then Winnipeg was the, was the nail in the coffin. I'm like, okay, never been to Winnipeg. I <laughs> <laughs> never thought I'd go to Winnipeg. But I always like, you know, trying to go everywhere. I want to go everywhere in the world. And this was just my, my chance to go there. So, so easy. That's so good. Easy, yeah. Yeah. Now, Amanda uh, Scholl also nominated for a Decky yep. uh, yes. for best, best female performance. But I'm telling you what, our listeners loved Project yeah, Christmas Wish. Huge. Fans. I mean, she just was so good. She, uh, I mean, so good. she is like next level. Yeah, she crushed amazing. it. And then yeah. lastly, in, in our best child actor category, uh, young Avery Peters also nominated for a decky. Oh my God, the trifecta! That's right. <laughs> the so entire good. leading cast were, were they nominated for best cat, like best ensemble? They might have been. There's a best ensemble award too. Um, but yeah, Avery Peters got a lot of rave reviews from even our toughest critics, which is me. Uh, and just uh, she was just she. A lot of these actors in the kids actors in these Hallmark movies, you just kind of feel bad for them. But Avery Peters really held her own and just crushed it. Watch out for Avery. I'm not kidding you. From the moment we started working together, I was like, this girl is special. Because I've done a couple of these films before, too. And, and you know, you, the kids' roles, they usually they give the kids a lot. And the kids are usually just trying to figure it all out. And they really – it is what it is. But she was – she was up – like, she, for her first film ever – she was like her and I would basically bounce around set singing all of Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was, she was a musical theater kid. And so she's mm-hmm. always like dancing and singing. And she's got this, just really this real passion for, uh, for acting already. And she's just such a natural. I'm not surprised to hear that she's been nominated. I would not be surprised to hear that she wins. I would not be surprised to see her all throughout Hollywood over the next couple of uh, decades. I'm she was such a uh, crucial 
part of the movie. Yeah, they like gave her she, a lot. Yeah, she she uh, more so than I think a lot of these movies. Her her role could have made or break broken the movie. You did mm-hmm. it. Breaked. Well, could have made or broken the movie, and <laughs> she it. she made it. I think so often these movies with the single dad. It's about, I don't know if my kid's ready for me to start dating again. Whereas this one, you are adamantly against, like, you're the one who's like, I'm not going to replace my kid's mom. Yes. I'm not blah, blah, blah. And the, and the kid has to kind of sleepless in Seattle you, so to speak. And so that's a, bit, that's a, he- a hefty burden for a kid in one of these movies. And she, and she nailed it. And she allowed you to be a little bit probably darker than some of the male leads in like, like resisting this because a lot of times the male leads are won over pretty quick. You had to, you resisted for quite a while. Your character does in the movie. So uh, that allowed you to do some stuff. I think that normally Hallmark, Hallmark leading men don't get to do. And that was actually a part of why I liked it because I think, you know, my, the, my character was mentioned a few times as being a cactus or being, you know, really prickly. And that's very on Hallmark. You know, that maybe happens in one scene, and then there's a quick turn, and then it's all just like lighthearted stuff. Uh, but they had me playing pretty prickly for, uh, I say, the first few acts. Like yeah. It went on for a while. Um, yeah, that's yeah, my dog. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Super prickly, no doubt about it. <laughs> Karen, hey, 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 hush. Is your dog's name Karen? Her name's Karen. Being I such a it. Karen right <laughs> now. Such that's a true. Karen right now. She's, and yet, what's funny is I named her... I planned the name, you know, a couple of years ago after my aunt passed away, and and then this whole thing happened. <laughs> the timing is just ridiculous. So yeah, so I have a Karen. Yeah, you do. Um, um, what was what were we talking about? <clears throat> uh, you got to be prickly for more than one act. Right, right. So I got to be prickly for for the first, almost like the first half of this movie, almost. But for me, that was such a fun ride as an actor, is to just really find that you know, find where you can be prickly, but still like kind of likable. And so there was a fine balance to, to, to walk there. And I think I'm pretty sure that I wasn't very likable in the first 30 or 40 minutes (laughs) of the film. Um, but that was what was written. And so it was fun as an actor just to honor that and be like, I don't care if you you don't like me, don't like me, but that's just, this is what the story is. And eventually I'll I'll win you over. Mm. Fantastic. Do you like, uh, do you prefer working on a movie like that or would you prefer t- TV series work? All. <laughs> yeah, as far as getting a job, all, but you don't really have a preference over seeing your character's arc from start to finish versus just piecemealing it together as you get new pages? You don't have like a... There's something fun about a film because it's this, this finite amount of time and you go, okay, cool, we have you know three weeks to prepare then we're going to film for three weeks and it's just this like this big chunk where you just throw everything into it and i love i love that process but i also love the process of of tv especially when you're a, a regular because you get this chance to breathe in in the character and just see the character develop over the course of a couple of seasons and so you never as an actor you don't know what's happening when, it, when you're in a tv series for the most part you're discovering it as your character discovers it so it's a very different process uh, when it comes to filming television. And I think as an actor, both are incredibly gratifying, um, w- whether it's short game or long game. Are you, are you still like with bated breath getting new scripts for you as you're filming it? Because I mean, in that oh, show, yeah. literally anyone can die at any minute. So, oh, yeah. so you, you've got to be just on pins and needles every week to see what happens to your character well, next. Well, I know what happens. This, I know what happens this round, this, this, <laughs> the, this show, but it, it doesn't always work like that. Okay. But I know what's coming, but I don't know. Like I have, I have the, the, I have the, basically the nuts and bolts of what's happening. Okay. But I don't have that. When, every time I get a script, it's, I still don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know how they're going to, the stories are going to play out. I don't know how it's going to be written. And so I am always excited to get a new script. But they told you your entire arc before you started. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's fascinating. Yeah, it is. They, and they don't always do that, by the way, but I had a, uh, I was in a really good position where there was another um, job that I had that was also there. I had to make a, 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 a tough decision Ooh. Uh, when this came up. What and, was and the it, other job, Travis? It was a really amazing CBS show. Um, it was a, a, a drama pilot, a medical drama with an incredible cast, incredible showrunner, Ooh. showrunners. And it's, it's like an amazing role for me. This guy's super mischief and has a, um, a really cool romantic storyline and just wants to do good for the world, but has this like this mischief, uh, mischievousness that I really appreciated. And 
I really fell into that character and, and um, had to make a tough choice when it came wow. to, to choosing. Young, young Shilt, Shelton is really good. But, uh, <laughs> like, I think you made the right choice. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I went with Young Shelton. Is it still in the air? Interesting. Yeah, it is. It's still in the air. I've never seen it, but that show. That show. They have. They have a way of doing that with those characters, huh? Mm. Um, Going back really quickly to Project Christmas Wish, I think the line that I love the most, and that our uh, listeners seem to love the most, is the like, "Hey." I want I want to kiss you. Right gosh, now. you're can beautiful. I, can, I can, I kiss, can I kiss you? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. Nobody, nobody does that, it Trev. Was, it was really good. What was it written or did you guys have some play play there cuz it seemed very I, organic and very fun and art not like Hallmark. Life and life imitates art. I have a funny story that I can't say cuz it might be a little too crass for the show, but there's some Give it a shot, Trev. Give it a shot. We can oh, edit yes. in post. <laughs> yeah. You, you can edit it in post? Yeah. I think it's inappropriate. I mean, it's a story <laughs> it's it's <laughs> Boy, I, I might have to tell you offline, but okay, anyways, fine. tell us offline. That's fine. Um, <laughs> this particular, we, we were rehearsing this scene we were, we were they were setting up the shot and Amanda and I, and, um, Jeff were upstairs and we were like, well, let's just run the scene now. Cause it's, it's four degrees outside. Let's just <laughs> rehearse it in here. And we, we, we went over it and it just seemed like. I don't think we decided in the rehearsal that we were going to say, can I, no, we did in the rehearsal. It just seemed like there was a gap from when we were having a conversation to when we kissed. And it just seemed like, it just seemed like the right thing. I think it was even Jeff that, that recommended it. Um, Or maybe I did it in a rehearsal without even, I don't know how it transpired, but it it seemed like a very organic thing that came up and we said let's keep that we got we're going to have to keep that and then the your beautiful line i just i just i just said that in the moment cuz um she's she was really beautiful and it felt like in those moments for me it, it, that moment of intimacy was coming up and it was a bridge and and it just felt very organic for me to to just say that and so um both of those things were not in the script. I love it. It played wow. organically. Oh, and yeah. it, felt, it was great. It's the best. Yeah. It yeah. felt super authentic. Too. I mean, and like, as you know, every single one of these movies has a moment like that in it. And this one, for it to stand out is doing something. It's doing something for it to stand because out. Because I so think, I think it's, it played especially well, at least for us as, as guys, thinking like, okay, if I lost my wife and I'd finally gotten to this point, I can, I can imagine the tension that you might feel like, okay like is this okay can i like it just felt like exactly the way that it would have probably turned out yeah i think i think that when it comes to stepping through our own our own pain and like transitioning to a whole um like stepping out of something into something new there's there's a lot of hesitancy and i think that there was almost an asking permission not only her but Right. Maybe even to myself and, 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 you know, to my, my deceased wife, there was, there was a lot that's behind that, Mm. that ask. And I think it was, it's really tender. And I think it takes, it takes a lot of courage to ask something like that. And I, 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 that's why I think it's relatable. Um, I, I, yeah, I really appreciated that moment and I was hoping as we filmed it that it wasn't going to be cheesy, yeah. Um, yeah. but I'm really glad that it's gotten such good, um, reception. Well, good news you're on Hallmark, Trev. So that's not a, <laughs> it's not a problem <laughs> by and large to do that. Oh, you is it rapid fire time? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Are yeah. you good? Is yeah, everyone good? Yeah. It's time for rapid fire. We each get to ask you three questions. You have to answer. It really is less about the rapid and more about the honesty. Don't <laughs> lie to us. Don't hold back. That's right. And if you can do it fast, that's good too. All yeah. right. Dan, uh, your dream director, film director to work for. Um, Edward Zwick. Okay. Weirdly enough, Edward Zwick. I like it. Uh, best menu item at Red Lobster. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. Some, some kind of like lobster tail or some. Travis shit. hasn't know. eaten Red Lobster in two <laughs> decades. <laughs> Just keeping him true to his roots, Not Dan. since the Bush administration <laughs> has Travis eaten Red Lobster. I can guarantee you. <laughs> um, you seem like a big whiteboard boy. Uh, I see two whiteboards in the shot here. Yeah. Uh, what's I have a white, Oh, I, I do have one. And there's one. And then there's one right, right behind you. Over your left shoulder. Our, our, on the wall. On the wall. Oh, no, in above the kitchen. Your, oh, in kitchen. the kitchen. No. Oh, in the kit. Oh, shit, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think I was lying about whiteboards? Well, of no, all the things. The canvas. Oh, canvas. <laughs> <down here. laughs> 
<laughs> He's like, you guys can see this? <laughs> Travis is like, no, I, I just have one. I mean, aside from the ones I purchased down here <laughs> and the one in the kitchen, one per room is what I'm in. Um, <laughs> what's the deal with the whiteboards, Trav? <laughs> uh, to me, it's, I'm a visual person. We all learn differently. And for me, I'm so visual. Um, and so I, there, there are just these little reminders that I have. Um, I mean, the stuff in the kitchen, I didn't even realize that was there. Um, that is, that's all my, uh, character in you. Oh, wow. Th that is like his life. We can't really read it. It's tough. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's all about health and performance and nutrition and longevity and biohacking and ancestral living. It's, it's very much my character. And so for me, it's just a, a it's a constant reminder of, of connecting to those things in my life and learning about mm. those things. It, um, and then go ahead. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Then the other board, I usually write, um, little reminder things, but also quotes, certain quotes that, that mean something to me. If I have an idea that comes up and I don't write it down, pff, that thing is gone. And, and you know, I hope it comes back and it potentially will at some time, but usually the boards are for me just to go, Oh, I just had a really cool moment of inspiration. It's going on the board. Mm. I like it. The question one B, cause you said the thing about you and the things you had, are, are you, uh, method like you do, method you, do, you, do you constantly want to stay in this uh, frame of mind of your character and so you keep reminders around your house i, I wouldn't go as far i mean i guess we're all method in a, in, in a certain way um for me i just i want to know what my i want to learn the world that my character is in he's a, if he is an expert in this world well then i want to learn that world so if, for me it's always um i feel like an offering i feel like the characters that i get to play they offer me something to learn and I always look at it like that. Like, what can I offer my character? And what can he offer me? And that's an element where I'm learning so much now about nutrition. I'm learning about health. I'm learning about survival training. I'm learning about um, all, all of these things that I naturally, I, I want to learn about them. I'm very interested in them anyways. This character is just giving me an opportunity to start really, really digging into it. And so um, is that method? I don't know. I, it, I think it's more just... Um, I'm just naturally interested in it. It's like the opportunity came up for mm -hmm. me and I'm like, I didn't realize all these things were in me just waiting to be discovered. And so, um, I don't know. Do you think that that's method? No, I think it's mm -hmm. a method adjacent maybe, yeah. but it's not method. It's not really? Daniel where, Day-Lewis. Like, it seems all, like you're just curious and want yeah, to know yeah, stuff. Yeah. You want to make sure your character's grounded in reality. Uh, I, I got my questions not about acting at all. Is there something from Georgia, specifically like a food that you just can't get or get really like a good version of it. In, oh yeah, in shrimp Los and grits. Shrimp and grits, you get shrimp it. Shrimp and grits is the best. There he is. Welcome back, buddy. Welcome yeah. back. Uh, hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, coolest biohack you've found? Coolest biohack that I have found. Um, I didn't understand that we need a certain amount of fat per day. Um, and, and that actually is, um, essential and just how your body processes food. So for me, I'm, I'm having a good amount of like my macronutrients are very specific throughout my day. I have mm -hmm. about 200 plus grams of protein. I have about 130 grams of fat and about hundred carbs a day. Wow. I'm in this flow and I didn't understand how, um, I never understood what even macronutrients were. I just ate food that was good and that was healthy. That felt good to me, but having a specific plan, uh, is really important for progress and for your, to, to achieve your goals. And so for me, the fat was huge. I didn't realize I need to be having more fat. Mm. Um, that that's seems what we always keep yeah. telling people. We're <laughs> always like, you got to have more fat. We're, we're ahead the of the game. Yeah. We're <laughs> ahead of the game, guys. Yeah. My experience with biohacking is these guys that went on Shark Tank and pitched this biohacked coffee, and they were just the most pretentious. And so mm. that's all I think of when I think of biohacking. But I'm sure it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Brian. Um, here's a, a question for you. What's your uh, what's your guilty pleasure uh, thing to uh, watch, whether it be a, a movie or a TV show, as you go into bed at night, or whenever you do your guilty pleasure viewing? That's a toughie because I would say that the things that I would probably be embarrassed to say that I've watched a little bit of is The Bachelor. Yeah, Only sure. when it's like when the guy is the like the the most recent one. I've watched a, a couple episodes. Um, that, yeah, that'd probably be a guilty. Yeah, no, that pleasure. counts. It counts. Um, your yeah. your favorite or most memorable trip to the movie theaters was to see what movie? Not not Grauman's Chinese to see one of yours. Yeah. Like when you were a kid, like this is you remember going, man, that movie, that experience was awesome. 
Titanic. I remember wow. I remember going with my mom and her friend, and I just remember being so excited to see that film. And we went during the day. And my mom always has this thing where we would go to the gas station beforehand and get any yeah. chocolate or candy that we wanted to get. She'd stuff it in her big purse. <laughs> and we would then, you know, go into the movie theater. And I remember watching Titanic and just being blown away by it. I just remember crying, you know, with Celine Dion's in the background. I just remember like crying and not wanting my mom and her friend to know that I was crying. <laughs> I think I, I, mean, I had to be like 13, 14 or yeah. something like that, but that was a biggie. My mom used to pop popcorn in bags. And oh bring it. my god! And like, as a kid, I'm like, this is awesome. Mama's doing this. But now I'm like, that's the worst way to consume popcorn. It's like at least an hour old. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but, but there's the thing. So I, I've, I've been guilty of that too. My, my brother's wife has this popcorn called soy butter popcorn. So you take some soy sauce, you put a little bit of butter in there, you heat it whoa. up, and then you sprinkle that over the popcorn. Whoa, it's whoa, ridiculously whoa. good. So I've brought that to... Uh, movie theater a couple times. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, we never brought pop. We did the, my dad would have a coat and he'd put candy in his coat to, to go to the movies for sure. Never the popcorn that thing. Be that was before they uh, sold alcohol at the theater. You bring a road. Oh in? yeah. Every now and then yeah. maybe occasionally you'd bring, mm -hmm. bring I mean, well, I, movie theaters. We're going to go eventually. We're going to go back. We're gonna I'm dude. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Mm. Uh, what's the? <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, 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 good I, stuff, I, I Dan. It's good Dan. stuff. We'll be right back to you in a second <laughs> here on NPR. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Where you invite us out to hang out uh, for a day, uh, and uh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do as bros? <laughs> In Los Angeles? Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. I think, the, after, I think after, you just blew our chances. After, yeah, that's <laughs> when it's over. After out. the quarantine is done. You know, no, I think, I think we've won him over. Yeah. Okay. hundred uh, percent. Yeah. Like, we're lifelong friends. I will show you guys a good time. I think what we would start off by doing, I, I think we, we start at the beach. Okay. It's always good to hang out in the morning at the beach, let the dog run around and play. Um, I think there's some really cool, uh, there's a cool hike I'd like to take you guys on. We go on a hike that overlooks the ocean mm. in Santa Monica. It's beautiful. Um, I'll take you to a couple of my favorite restaurants. And then I think we, what we'll do is we'll, we'll sit down in a circle and we'll light a fire and we'll talk about our feelings and we'll hold hands and sing yeah. songs. How about that? It sounds great, but I've got bad news, Trav. By the end, it's just me and you holding hands because these two aren't making it through the hike. I'm just letting you know right now. <laughs> I'm okay, not making just, it. I'm not making it past the beach, my friend, because I can't swim. <laughs> I'm a. I'm a go ahead and drown uh, just early on in the day. If you wanted just a full day of sharing feelings, I'm here for it. Uh, <laughs> totally on board. We'll meet back up. For the feelings. What's what city in Georgia were you from? This isn't a question. I just am curious. Peachtree City, Georgia. It's yeah. just south of Atlanta. And it's a golf cart community. Yeah. There's 180 miles of golf cart paths. No, exactly so. where it is. This is not the first part. I've talked to someone else from Peachtree. Maybe it maybe wasn't on here. I'm not sure. We know. I know exactly where that is. Yeah, absolutely. P town. That's right. What's a uh, a current trend in uh, the world or in America that you just can't get on, that you just don't get? Like for me, biohacking. <laughs> <laughs> a current trend that I cannot get on board with. That's a tough question. Me, that is a tough, something that I can't get on board with. Um, for me, it's hashtags. I still don't like them. It's a good one, buddy. Dan, mm. do you have one? Mm. I mean, okay, okay. I, I can't get, I can't get on board with TikTok. I haven't yeah. I, I don't yeah. it yet. Us That's either. a great one. We, we talk about it. it all the time, but we just don't get it. Yeah. yeah. I want to get it. Um, I just it just takes time. And it feels like it's just something so new. I'm like, well, why can't we just do the old thing? Yeah, yeah. Travis um, and I are the same age, well, it's, roughly. Like, I think we're like based on his IMDb birthday, and we we're like six months apart. And I'm telling you, like, this is what it's like to get old, Trev. Like, it's like all of a sudden because I hate TikTok. I'm like, why are we doing? Why this? is everyone Look, dancing? I don't, I, don't, I don't hate it. I would like to know how to. I just don't have the time. I don't know what to how to even start. But there's another thing too. I wanted to uh, get into gaming. Because uh -huh, sure. I think gaming is so people do it and they look like they have such a good mm -hmm. time doing it. So I bought a, a, the Oculus, uh, the new one and the, the, the VR. And yeah. I said, cool, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to game. <laughs> and I, I've used it a couple of times and I was just like, it's not sticking. And I'm like, man. So I don't understand the. I guess I don't understand the gaming. Either. All those people to, to, out there just yeah. dying for an Oculus. They're like, Van <laughs> yeah, Winkle's just not even using one in his house. 
is unbelievable. To the gaming trend, though, like I don't get like Twitch and watching people play oh, video no. games. Like I remember being a kid when I used to play video games and like how I had no patience for waiting. So I would just my leave. Turn. Yeah, <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> people watch for hours. People make living just playing and other people are watching. It's, it's amazing. Wild. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, but guys, sign up for our Twitch. We're doing something yeah, really cool. Sure. Later. <laughs> <laughs> um, go for Mario Bros. One, two, and three. That's exactly crazy. We'll, uh, we'll Travis, it. thank you so much for joining us. Um, good luck tomorrow on the deckies. I think it's going right. to be a really good Fingers night for you, for you, or yes. at least your movie. Yeah. Uh, tell everybody how they can follow thank you, you on, the, on the social medias and keep track of what you're up to and all that good stuff. Yeah, I uh, need to start posting more on social media. I'm Travis Van Winkle on, on Instagram. I'm TV Dub on Twitter. And I don't even think I use Facebook anymore. I, is fit, do, do people use Facebook anymore? Is that yeah, a thing? Yeah. Not in um, the United States. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, and your TikTok? Soon, your TikTok. soon to be some, something on TikTok. I'll, yeah. I'll get back to you on that. Um, uh, let me write on my board. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Uh, TikTok. No. I want your, one of your new boards. I want it to be your TikTok board. That's right. It's just all your TikTok ideas. All different ideas. ideas. Exactly right. I love your it. first TikTok should be promoting this podcast. I love it's, it. I think that's a great it's idea. Absolute, that's a deal. If I ever get on TikTok, it will be to promote this. By the way, I appreciate your guys' show. I like the banter you guys have back and forth. I love your approach on the Hallmark films. I think it's really dynamic and fun, and um, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank Thanks, you, man. Travis. Thank More you. than kind. I love it. I loved uh, having you. I love you. Is that too much? <laughs> it is too much. <laughs> That's on me, everybody. That's on <laughs> me. Too much. Uh, how about we just leave by telling you, and the first, we're going to be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast. It's produced by Brandon Gray and presented by Friendly TV. Our lovely set is decorated by Plum Home Decor. You can check them out at plumonmain.com. For more information on Bramble Jam Podcast, go to BrambleJamPodcast.com. And to hear every Bramble Jam Podcast ad-free, go to BrambleJamPlus.com.